Hi, welcome to the Andrew Buckle book review of The Art of Classic Sci-Fi Movies, edited by Adam Newell, introduction by Kim Newman. Now, the book is from Applause, you can see the details there, Theatre and Cinema Books, and there's the ISBN. Now, I bought this for £32.20, I'm certain the price is around about that now, on Amazon, so you can find obviously copies there, and I assume obviously on eBay and other sites. Now, it's for film posters, a whole mix of film posters from 1910, all the way through to the 1970s, nothing beyond that. And you can see details there of all the various things, science cinema all the way to the 70s. And there's about 88 different sections, lots and lots of subjects covered in this, various directors, all those sort of things, as well as different themes throughout the book. So let's just go through the book, but you can see it's a nice thick chunk, book. it's a sizable book. Of course, there has been many similar sort of books, but I think this is probably one of the best I certainly have seen for a long time. There is also a horror one that's related to this, though that I think is not so easy to get. It's been, I think it's called B, so it's B movies one. Well. Go through this, The Art of Classic Sci-Fi Movies. The details there, you can see more details there. Applause, here's all the content. You can see a right, quite a list of all those. Metropolis, Woman on the Moon, Bridget Helm, High Treason, and so on whole range from all the way through to the 1970s. So you've got 1960s, 1950s, and of course the early years, as it says there. It also includes non-US posters, lobby cards, etc. details, and contributors, etc. See there, all the worlds, all the worlds. I mean, some really lovely posters. Some I've seen before, some I haven't. I mean, some that are fairly familiar, but you've also got these, I love these lobby cards. They're always fascinating. So but the one thing I probably think that and I'm not going to, this doesn't show it, this section, so I'm just going to, you are here, so you can see this section, doesn't give really any details underneath, I would love that, I personally I prefer that, you can get details at the back, there's a bit more information, but it's, I think it would be nicer if they'd actually put it sort of along the top or below, obviously everyone will have different opinions on that, but personally I like to see like here, Houdini, it would be nice obviously some details, like the date, 1910, 1920, 19 whatever, because of course they must have been different years, different countries and all those sort of things. Maybe the size of the posters would have been quite nice as well, but it doesn't give that detail. But still, I mean, you actually see the actual picture itself, which is of course superb. Houdini, lots and lots of examples. Obviously you've got the famous ones, obviously famous images that you can see there. And also of course you've got like various countries. And that's another thing. Sometimes obviously it's like German one or it's Japanese or Italian, whatever. It would be nice to actually say it is or not because, you know, I don't know. It could be Argentinian, it could be Spanish, whatever. I'm not certain. So it's uh, that's the sort of thing that I think would have been a bit more information in that area. High treason. Also, lots of films that I've never heard of. Never heard of that one, High Treason. And the thing about it is, of course, you can go then and look it up. You can find out if you can get a DVD of the film or, of course, find a copy on various, obviously, video websites. Lost World. And I've been doing that this afternoon, just been going through a few of them, thinking, oh, you know what? I have never seen that film. And I think that, wow, what a great science fiction film. Now, I do love uh, this, like the horror channel, and also the science fiction channel, and other channels, of course, Talking Pictures has lots and lots of these sort of films, quite often, not every single one, of course, but they often have a lot of these old classic films, and they're always great to see, so things to come. And you've got here Destination Moon, obviously a famous one there. Two years in the making. Though it does have, a, you know, some details about all these various films, and it's it's not a huge amount of information. You've got like rocket ships there, so you can see a bit of detail. But obviously, the main thing, the posters. Now obviously, some you've got fairly small, some you've got fairly big. And again, obviously, there. Now I assume that could be an Italian one. I don't know. That's the trouble. <laughs> I'm not really certain. I guess from the writing and the obviously what it's described, and obviously that you know you think, oh, that must be a French one, etc. But it would be nice to actually have it, that information, or German one, or whatever, or Dutch. I'm not always familiar with every single language, so it's, it would be nice. And also, it's got these, which I actually love. I've got a book of film noir ones, these ones, where you've got these lovely posters that, you know, you get in the newspapers. You have several listings like this, and or maybe other booklets, I don't know. But I would love to see a book of, obviously, science fiction ones like that. The film noir one is amazing. It's like about 500, obviously a labour of love that someone's put all these clippings, and it's like thousands and thousands of clippings. Really amazing. Absolutely one of the best books. I would love to see that in science fiction one. A sort of, this sort of listing like that. That would be brilliant. Hopefully someone can produce something like that. A horror one. 
horror one. Obviously, all the listings from Universal, all the various old films. Obviously, some Japanese ones as well. Godzilla. The King of the Monsters. This Island Earth. Oh, the Magnetic Monster. I mean, some of these films are... Yes, pretty terrible. <laughs> Not the world's greatest film. Whenever you watch them, I quite often, like I say, put talking pictures on, they've got the film, and I think, I watch about 10 minutes of it, and I'm thinking, I have no idea. <laughs> it's just terrible. But I'm certain someone loves it, and that's the most important thing. There's always something there that someone enjoys, and that's, that's all that matters. Might not be for everyone. The Indestructible Man, Lon Chaney. And actually, one thing I really like, and of course, this is something for science fiction slash comic book fans. They also include a few of the comics as well that's obviously, you know, because obviously they were advertising the film as well. So you add that. And also, of course, you've got the Village, I love that one, Village of the Damned. And you've got other ones. Like, and the thing is, of course, the ones like that, <laughs> I have no idea. And I guess that's the sort of information at the back that you would find out what the name was of the film, because unless you happen to read that, I can't. I wouldn't know. Of course, the Daleks one, I love that. I went and saw it recently at the cinema. On massive, it was like a real big screen. And I saw both of them, the Daleks one and the Invasion. And it was just absolutely wonderful. I actually spent most time looking at the edges of the film, watching sort of bits and pieces about it, thinking, oh, I've never really noticed that. Because, of course, when you're watching on a small screen or TV or something, you don't really see that sort of thing in the detail. But you can actually just watch bits of the film that you wouldn't normally look at and think, oh, that's quite interesting, sort of, you know, seen it 50, 100 times. But at the same time, when you see it at the cinema, it's something much, oh, Plants of the Vampires, the day the sky exploded. There's The Last Man on Earth as well. And The Apes, one of my favourites. I love that. Planet de Affen. Okay, I assume that means apes, but it's still Planet de Sins. I knew that one. Obviously, the French one. I love, of course, it was The Monkey Planet, the book. Pierre Boulet. And you've also got other ones, The Stepford Wives, of course, classic, Clockwork Orange, classic film, and so on. Obviously, I could spend ages, of course, got my favourite in here, I think. I'm certainly has. I'm seeing it. definitely Logan's Run. Got to have Logan's Run. I love Logan's Run. Oh, Man Who Fell to Earth, of course. Absolutely love that film. One of my favourites. And I love a lot of the 70s films. And this is great. It's just a reminder of some really great stuff. Art of classic sci-fi movies. The book, of course, ends, and I'm not going to show the end, but you can guess the film that ends, obviously, in the 70s. There is only one film that can be, even though I'm not... Even though I did see it ten times when it came out. <laughs> I, I actually find it hard to watch now. It's one of those films that I sort of can watch bits of it. But Anyway, it finishes with that, obviously, classic film, 1977. And also you've got the lobby cards here, non-US posters at the back, and also a great index as well. Of course, you have to have an index. And that's very useful. And that's it. What an absolutely lovely book. I really, really enjoyed looking through this. It's just great. Reminder of lots of classic science fiction films and some pretty dire ones as well, to be honest. As well as lots of films to think, you know what, I'm going to go and sit and watch some of these. So that's a really great thing. Have to get the DVDs for them or hopefully see them on maybe, like say, talking pictures. So the art of classic sci-fi movies, really, really worth picking up.